Welcome to our studios in New York. I'm John Saunders. Out to your game in just a moment. Top five teams all in action, all on the road today. Although Ohio State had an easy time with the Illini. 41 to nothing to score there. Texas has the lead over Oklahoma. The story here, Ricky Williams, 139 yards right now, as he is headed to becoming the number one player in the history of the NCAA in rushing the football. He is number three right now, passing Herschel Walker. We'll have more on that at halftime right now. Out to your games. A sold-out Kyle Field, but 12,000 less seats than normal due to that construction you saw in the end zone. And this is a Texas A&M team that's 4-1 and one on the season, but that one lone loss was the kickoff classic to Florida State. They played great competition, Gary, the last eight games. They really have played a lot of teams ranked very well. And the more you play these types of teams, the better you're going to get it. There you see it. Florida State, UCLA, Nebraska last year haven't won a lot of them, not since 1989 against LSU when they came in here number seven have they defeated a top 10 team here at Kyle Field. This town is definitely ready for this football game. A&M won the toss and deferred. Nebraska and Joe Walker will receive and watch out for him as Leckler hits a line drive that's fielded at the 29-yard line. One of the up men, and oof, paid the price. Was that Sheldon Jackson? Sheldon probably wasn't expecting to get hit quite this early in the ball game. Actually, he made a very nice stop on that one and saved a lot of yardage. That he did as we get set to take a look at the Chili starting lineups. First, the Biggins up front for Nebraska. It's a young line with the exception of the senior Josh Heskew inside. Sherman and Guest for the guard. Schwab and Jolch are the tackles. Matt Davison gets his first start. Wiggins and Sheldon Jackson, who we just talked about. D'Angelo Evans in the backfield. We saw him look great two weeks ago. Still a little bit hobbled. And here he comes on the first pitch of the game. And who else? That win makes the tackle. We'll see a lot of number nine today. Defensively for A&M, Rocky Bernard has the most size of a small group up front with Edwards and Flemons. The linebacking core, you know about that win, but hey, Cornelius Anthony's not bad. The number two tackler with Holdman and Bradley. And the secondary, Rich Cody, a former walk-on, leads the secondary and hits with Webster, Jennings, and Brooks. And there's the guys, Gary said. We'll see a lot of them today, and already he has one tackle in one play. Second down and 10, Nebraska. Newcomb pumps one way, wants to throw back a screen the other, and the Aggies have that one smelled out, and Newcomb's got to throw it away. That's going to be intentional grounding on Bobby Newcomb right there. He threw that ball away. Head referee standing right there watching. They're going to march it off. Texas A&M doesn't give anybody anything on opening drives. As you saw, a look at the numbers. you got to go back a year. And here's our referee. Be intentional grounding. Intentional grounding on the offense. Lost it down. Third down. Brings up third and ten. It's one of the toughest penalties in college football. It's from the spot of the throw. You tack on extra yardage. Obviously, it's going to happen behind the line of scrimmage, and you lose the down. I mean, that's a huge loss. It's going to be what? 25, at least 25 yards here for first down on third down. And I don't think Nebraska has that type of play in their in their offense. R.C. Slocum, 55 and one at home. Already the folks in it for their defense. Third down and 29, Nebraska. They're going to play it safe, D'Angelo Evans, but he bounces outside. Brandon Jennings made the stop from the secondary and a three and out, Nebraska. Very interesting that time for Mike Hankwitz, a defensive coordinator for AM. He kept his base unit on the field, suspecting a run on that play. AM loves to use their nickel defense, but against Nebraska, he says, let's just stay at home and play the run. Chris Taylor dropping back, waiting on the punt from Bill LaFleur. High snap. LaFleur gets it away, and it's a dandy. Fielded at the 24 by Taylor. Weaves his way to about the 33. Almost looked like a late hit at the end of that game, that uh, run back. Brandon Bosch is the guy who came in there late. No flag. And it'll be AM starting from its own 33-yard line. Our Chile starting lineups for the Aggies. Cameron Spikes has been a tackle most of his career. He's moved inside, and he and Haimuli make a great set of guards. Chris Cole is their big play threat. Spiller and Campbell, two excellent tight ends. And in the backfield, Randy McCown, his first start, uh, his second start, and his first win as a starter came last week. Hall and Big Jamar Toombs in the backfield. And there's McCown. 
Didn't put up big numbers last week, but good enough to get a win over Kansas. First down from the 33. Here's a toss to Hall. Big in the middle of the field. Dante Hall on a cutback to midfield and down to the 45-yard line of Nebraska. 22 yards on the opening carry. I think the A&M players were unanimous when talking about the Nebraska team of a year ago. They said Nebraska had intensity and focus beginning that game. We could not believe the level that they played at. They said, we're ready for that level this year. We want to start off the game faster than we did in 97. They certainly have here today already in Nebraska's end of the field of the 45-yard line. First down. Now the inside handoff to the fullback. And that's not booing, that's Toombs. Big Jamar Toombs goes for about six yards against the Nebraska defense. That's led by Mike Rucker, who saved the day against Oklahoma State. Kaiser Warren and Kelsey join him up front. The linebacking core, Jay Foreman, had a career-high 13 tackles last week. Brian Shaw and Eric Johnson flank him. And in the secondary, Joe Walker, talk about saving the day, a 73-yard punt returns, what was the deciding factor in that game last week. Sweeney and the two Browns join him in the Nebraska secondary. It's second down and four. Two tight ends set again for the Aggies. You'll see that most of the day. Here's the toss. Dante Hall. He's down near the 30-yard line before Mike Brown can wrap him up. Right now, some excellent holes being opened up by that front wall. An AM front five, but let's add two, the two tight ends. Right. Here's Filler and here's Campbell. They go a lot of two tight ends, and those are the two guys that I think are going to be the key to this game for AM. If they can handle those outside linebackers and rush ends, Kelsey and Rucker for Nebraska. Brad, we saw how they dominated Washington with those outside edge rushers. a and is going to put the big guys on them. First down at the 30. Cole, the motion man. McCown wants to throw to it. Pumps once, and now he'll bring it down. Safely gets back for a loss of about a yard. He wanted to go to Chris Cole, and... He was covered, so he pulled it down and did what he could. It'll bring up second down 11. Well, one of the advantages of going two tight ends is you run a balanced offense. You can run at either one of those outside linebackers or rush ends for Nebraska. One of the disadvantages, though, is when you try to throw the ball, you only have one wide receiver. Right. <laughs> and if he's not open, not many alternatives. You know, you got that progression, one, two. You just, just got one. Stop at one. Uh -huh. Second down 11. Out of the eye, the second man threw his haul, and he is wrapped up this time. Foreman hit him, so did Johnson, the two linebackers, and Kelsey was there to make sure, and it's going to bring up a third and long situation for the first time today. I think one of the most encouraging things if you're AM trying to look at Nebraska films is not the closeness of the game last week, but was the success that Oklahoma State ran between the tackles of Nebraska. I'm sure Charlie McBride has saw, seen the same film. Right. Nathan Simmons had a huge game, and most of that was done on the inside last week. Third and ten. A count from the gun. Plenty of time, but he has it intercepted. Down the sideline. Ralph Brown now cuts back to the middle of the field. Brown still on his feet. All the way to the 40-yard line. McCown, the last time he was intercepted was 25 games ago. He should not have thrown that pass. Have not had an interception, as you said, this year. The protection up front against a zone blitz. You see the outside guys, Johnson and Shaw, come. Cowan has plenty of time to throw the ball and step it in. But Brown guesses to the outside. He's got a little help inside. And Cole that time just did not call. Chris Cole didn't finish his route, and that helped on the interception for Nebraska. Well, Brown had a pickoff against a and in the Big 12 championship game. Last December, we've got one here today. The Aggies dropped Newcomb for about a half-yard loss. Warwick Holdman, the outside linebacker, makes the hit. Ralph's first of this season, but as I said, he got one last December, 10 months ago, in this same matchup. Yeah, Ralph Brown, two-year starter at corner for Nebraska, started every game he's played in Nebraska at cornerback. So the threat by the Aggies, thwarted by the Nebraska defense. We showed you that graphic that they hadn't given up any points in the first quarter. They still haven't, and we've just under 10 minutes remaining in this first stanza. Bobby Newcomb wants to pull up and throw and does, and he's got his man open. Out of bounds, about the 31 is Matt Davison. 
and he's going to be a yard or a yard and a half shy of the first down. Aggie defense, as you see, the second drive already. They have not allowed the drive to start in their own territory. And that one was by interception, so it. that's a little fluky, too. Well, I mean, they're all inclusive right there. It just shows you how, how very few times they turn the ball over this right. program. Only four. That's the fifth time this year. Two tight ends set now for Nebraska. Bobby Newcomb has a look. Third down, a long yard. Vicka, the up man. Newcomb going to keep it, and he's going to go down. Nice job defensively by Holdman again. Warwick Holdman originally began his career as an inside linebacker. Moved outside to what you know most people who followed Aggie football would know as the Reggie Brown spot, the speed spot in this defense. Great pursuit inside, and boy, I'll tell you, Bobby Newcomb doesn't seem to me to have that explosiveness that he had earlier in the year. He he looks to me to be about 75% right now. There's Holdman's numbers. You can see five tackles for loss, including that one that's brought up a fourth down and two, and Nebraska will go for it. They're three out of four on fourth down conversions this year. The late pitch to Evans. Get in the backfield, and down he goes. Brandon Jennings with a huge hit from the secondary. Well, wow. it's not like A&M has never seen option football. The Southwest Conference for years was the home of option football. And you can tell R.C. Slocum and Mike Hankowitz, who has faced Nebraska 15 times in his career, is ready for the offense. Stopped by Bradley, the end man on the honest line of scrimmage, number 40, forces the pitch. And up comes Jennings to make the play. What a play. What a defensive stand. Speaking of the offense, it comes back on the field for the Aggies now as they take over on downs. Dante Hall waits for his block. Brought down by Lauren Kaiser after a pickup of four. Hall had a 177-yard game and three touchdowns in the win over Kansas last week, and he had one of 60-plus that was called back because of penalty. Here's a one guy more, that can pick up some yards. One more look. Here's Jennings right here. He's an alley runner, forced the pitch, rush him wide, everybody in their lanes. Great defense. It helps when you can run from the second. Second down and six for a &M. From its own 38, Hall again. And a penalty marker. I think we're going to have a holding call on the inside this time. Looked like maybe Seth McKinney. Big pile up in the middle. And Steve Buschek is our referee holding Texas A&M. Well, one thing Steve Craigthorpe said, the new offensive coordinator for A&M, is you must stay out of predictable situations when you play Nebraska. Here's Steve right here. Guy calling the plays with the receiver coach a year ago. He's using the same wristband that the quarterbacks are using on the field to call his plays. And what he said is, A&M is much like Florida State. They run from the outside. They got great speeds. But in long yardage situations, they'll play that fire zone. And that got that interception right. on that last third down play. This is a second down play, but a long ways to go. 14. Sir Parker in there, tailback in motion out of the backfield. McCown, quick drops, going to lay out a long ball on the side. The fingertips of Aaron Oliver. He may have had a touchdown, and there's a flag down at the 41 yard line. Let's see if they get Sweeney for interference. I'm not sure, but I think it was on Oliver with the interference that time. Let's see which way they call it. You yeah. are correct, sir. That was a perfectly thrown ball, and Eric, Aaron Oliver right here is the matchup against Sweeney to the outside, and just as the ball is thrown, see him give the push with his, oh boy, that was kind of inconsequential if oh. you ask me, especially since he coughed it up. But you know, the official that called it was right on the Nebraska sideline, and you know he had some of those coaches and players in his ear. Yeah, He's got one in his ear right <laughs> There's now. There's another one. That, that really was an inconsequential push right there by Oliver, considering he dropped the ball. They thought they had long yardage before. It's getting worse. They got to get all the way to the 44-yard line for a first down. One of the things that Steve Craig Thorpe and R.C. told us is we're not going to have a lot of chances to make big plays. We have to capitalize on those chances. There was a chance right there. They got nothing from Second and 29, way back at their own 15-yard line now. Give it to the first man through. 
field. Only about three yards for Jamar Toons. Joe Walker made the stop. And R.C. is still upset. <laughs> well, uh, you know, that, that's, that's really the game plan today. Keep it nice. Keep it simple. Run the ball between the tackles, just like Oklahoma State did. They stayed patient with it. But then, when you have an opportunity to make the big play, make it. Those are unforced errors, and Oliver had an unforced error right there. They're not going to get that many perfect throws from their quarterback, and that one was. He'll probably throw one here, too, but more than likely a safe one. Third and 25. This is going to be a touchdown for the Aggie. Chris Taylor. That's 81 yards worth of kissing. Well, you weren't suspecting to get a lot of kissing against Nebraska, but maybe. Who knows? Randy McCown, you said you're not expecting a lot of big plays and great throws. Well, so far, he's thrown three of them. Two have been great ones. Picture perfect 81-yard toss on a third and 25. Russell Bynum for the point after. Aggies. As the construction workers back there had their helmets on, too, and no doubt are cheering for Texas A&M. 7-0, the Aggies in front. Steve's band had his first big break last night, so they packed up the only four-door compact pickup out there, Ford Ranger, and headed out of town. This can't be right. Trust me, it's going to be great only to find when they hit the stage, something was a little out of place. Them. It seems the only thing tougher than Steve's Ranger was last night's crowd. Four-door Ford Ranger. Built Ford Tough. This is Lusk, Wyoming. Cows outnumber people here 100 to 1. The thing that isn't apparent about Lusk is it's wired. Lusk has strung fiber optic cable for the future of high-speed internet. The schools have 320 computers for 500 kids. Home businesses on PCs are common. Why? They're practical people. They want to talk to the outside world using technology. They want to save their ranches with technology. They want to talk to the kids who've left and keep more kids from leaving by having the technology. They want to save their small town and keep it exactly the way it is. And they're using everything they can think of to do that. Technology is a tool. Software is a tool. These are the dreams it's made for. And that's why we make it. He gave you nightmares. He made you scream twice. Now he's warning you. West Craven presents Don't Look Down, the Halloween event to die for. First touchdown allowed by Nebraska in the last nine games in the first quarter, and it was a big one. 81 yards to Chris Taylor from Randy McCown. The first touchdown, I might add, ever for Chris Taylor as a collegiate player. You think he's a little bit happy? <laughs> So as that graphic said, uh, Nebraska had not given up a point in the first quarter this season. Leckler's kick off. Pull around at the nine by Joe Walker. And Walker will not make it back to the 20. One more look. Here's Chris Taylor. Here's Chris Cole right here. Here comes the route across the field. A lot of things happen. McCown comes up and buys some time to clear the linebacker for Taylor. Nice throw. Perfect throw, in fact. But watch Chris Cole. It's what he doesn't do. Here's Cole right here. Watch what he doesn't do. He doesn't do anything dumb and clip right there. He judges Taylor as the angle. He's going to score smart football. Nebraska trailing. Something that doesn't happen often. From their own 19-yard line, a fumbled snap by Newcomb. And he got back to the line of scrimmage and eked out a yard. Cornelius Anthony was there to make sure he wasn't going too far. 
bad exchange between center and quarterback. Well, remember, Bobby Newcomb or Eric Crouch, neither one of the two starting and first and second team quarterbacks for Nebraska practiced on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Neither one got a lot of st snaps this week, and that knee has been bothersome for Bobby. I think, even watching him yesterday, I commented to you, and I didn't think he was close to 100%. He looked it against Washington, but he had been well rested going into that game, and he's been a little bit hobbled ever since. Second down and nine. Makovica, the first man, the fullback, and he got about three. Anthony again from the linebacker spot in on the stop. Well, there is some experience at AM against Nebraska. The coaching staff has it in Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator. This is the 14th consecutive year that he's faced coached against Nebraska offense. There's Mike. He was at Colorado and Kansas. Got a lot of experience with this offense. He's not intimidated at all by Nebraska. From the 24, Newcomb hit from behind. Roiland Bradley, the other outside linebacker, gets him. Roiland Bradley shifts to defensive end in the nickel look. That time, Nebraska was in a third and long. Hankowitz thought it was a passing situation, went to his nickel package. Nebraska is very varied in their offense, have a lot of things, but handling the nickel package, there he is at the end man of the line of scrimmage, coming around the corner, making the play. Boy, this is a and team. You could sense it yesterday and Thursday watching them practice. They were ready. They were focused. They were at least going to match the intensity this time in Nebraska. Ten guys up against LaFleur. They put some heat on him. This one floats to Taylor, who's got the big play already today. He'll take it at the 42, his own number, and goes down at the 42. And a penalty marker flies down as well. I think we're going to have the halo call. Two yards or six feet. <laughs> I heard that put differently the other day. I love that. That was cheating. I don't think yeah. Just... <laughs> Illegal block in the back from behind on Texas A&M yep. is the call. He had his two yards, Gary. Yes, he did. And there's, there's the, the push right from behind. And R.C. having a chat on the sideline with the man that had the illegal block. Sean Corriette, familiar name to Aggie fans. His older brother was a great player here. Illegal push in the back on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Even with that, the Aggies have the lead and the ball back when we come back. 4.53 left first quarter. Long ago, an inventor came up with the assembly line, allowing a few people to make a lot of something. It was the model for efficiency. At Chili's, we pride ourselves for our inefficiency because we make each of the Big Mouth burgers by hand, grilled one at a time by a person. And when you taste for yourself how good they are, you'll appreciate all the time we've wasted. Chili's Fresh Grilled Big Mouth Burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Relax. Kick back. Rest easy. Not the first thoughts that come to mind when investing on your own. But working with our financial advisors, you'll feel differently. Every client's ambition should be our ambition. Their dreams. Our dreams. Isn't it reassuring to know that whatever your goals in a complex world, someone will be looking out for you? We measure success one investor at a time. My name is Dennis Porter, and I work in the Ford Dummy Lab. They build it, we crash it. We don't care about the damage, we care about the people. Our testing exceeds the government standards. Ford has more five-star rated vehicles than any other car manufacturer. We go that extra mile to make sure our cars are safe. I'm proud of that. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built for tough. Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. And the document company, Xerox. Keep the conversation going. Share the knowledge. A&M with a 
touchdown lead and the ball back with 4.53 remaining first quarter. A long stretch hand off the hall. And Dante gets swarmed under after he maybe got a yard. Dante Hall is a very interesting player for A&M. Freshman and sophomore year, he averaged right around seven yards per carry. Mm -hmm. He was kind of struggling and came out in the paper kind of sheepish, sheepishly saying, I need the ball a few more times. He got a 36 attempts last week, <laughs> and he broke it out for 177 yards, and all of a sudden that average is looking like it is today. Five on the year and 6.5 today. The last one only got him a yard, second down and nine. He'll try it again, and this time a much better result. Just bulls his way for a little guy that time out to the 40-yard line. Dante Hall and his mom and dad looking on. All right. When you got the hat, you got the son's number I up really there. Like you style it. I really like that. That was a nice look right there. He's got the game. I know he's not listening to us. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> That's the Aggie Network, I would assume. <laughs> Third down and two. Hall already with 46 yards on seven carries. And from the 40-yard line, they'll toss it to it. Cuts up inside. It's going to have to be a tough two. I don't know. I think he might be a little bit short. Very, very close. AM has been very successful on fourth down this year, going numerous times, but not against this type of talent. I'd be very surprised if RC did not punt the ball here. And not from their own 42-yard line. Right. And here comes the punting unit. He's got one of the best in the country, and Shane Leckler, who comes in third in the nation in kicking, and he's had so many pooch punts this year. He says, I'd like to just stretch my leg once. Well, he's got an opportunity right here. <laughs> sure I think. does. This is the perfect distance to, to punt from. It's like a full wedge, you know, 120-yard wedge right here. Just full swing. No, that's not a very, that's my swing. It's going to go all the It get to the green. It's, it's going to get to the green. Play the bump and run. It's pin high at the four. <laughs> 55-yard kick is how it turns out. Nebraska deep in their own territory when we come back. have it your way, it just tastes better. You guys are in here again? I can't believe this! You're always in here nursing your injuries. I have never seen such a group of cream pops in my life! This is football! I need guys that can play! Oh, man, I thought he'd never leave. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Hot dog, anyone? You're born. You die. In between, you work on cars. We should all be so lucky. MetLife financial professionals believe the best way to discuss your financial future, including mutual funds, annuities, and insurance, is face-to-face. -face. That's why we make house calls. Get Met. It pays. DC United. Columbus Crew. It's game one of the conference finals. Major League Soccer kicking and screaming live Sunday at 4 on ABC. The Bowl Championship Series is online with live action, interviews, game highlights, and live polls at ESPN.com and on America Online. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you at Kyle Field, where AM leads by a touchdown, and they've got Nebraska backed up inside its own five-yard line. D'Angelo Evans is in the end zone as he comes out with a handoff, and he got only a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Terry Nichols met him. That win, part of that defense, and part of the 12 semifinalists now named today here in College Station as up for the Lombardi Award. And there it is. And Lombardi would love that win, I'll tell you that much. Six of the players on the list on offense, six on defense. There's Tracy Wistrom, and his brother Grant won that award for Nebraska a year ago and ended up being the number one draft choice in the NFL. Second down and eight. Whoa. Whoa. Nobody home. Nobody Bobby home. Newcomb now going to try to do it on his own. Everybody went left. the wrong way. 
Everybody went left. Newcomb went right. We're going to New York and John Saunders. All right, time for the Burger King updates. Notre Dame against Arizona State. Jerry is jacked. You know he's got the bad shoulder. Doesn't look like it here. Seven yards to Malcolm Johnson. They jump on top. Seven nothing. That's where it stands now. Brad, back to you. That's where we stand as well, John. First three possessions, 14 yards on 10 plays, and still no first down. And that's something you can't say very often for a Nebraska team with 140 now left in the quarter. Third and six. Luka. Oh, that was almost intercepted by Rich Cody. Oh, my goodness. Threw it right to number 48. He dropped it. But still, they'll hold, and it'll be a punt coming up for LeFleur <laughs> from his own end zone. Another opportunity now, you know, everything is going AM's way so far in the fourth first quarter here, but Cody has another opportunity to make that big, huge play with an interception there that can really break a game like this open. That's the type of things that doesn't seem like a big play, and you pat him on the shoulder right now, that now but if Cody intercepts it, it's 14-0. Let's see if they try to put some heat on LaFleur. Nope, they're gonna back up. They've got the return on. Chris Taylor waits on it from the 47. Taylor broke a couple tackles inside the 40, and he got a nice return to the 38-yard line. He's been the big play man so far today and has our only touchdown. And now A&M, a team that so often seems to win the battle of field position, is winning it here at Kyle Field today. Start at the 38-yard line. Right, a lot of A&M fans have been saying, you know, the offense has been less predictable than past years, maybe, but still has not been effective so far in this season. Steve Craigthorpe said yesterday, you know, we've had a lot of games that we've been in control. We haven't shown everything. I think today we'll do better than the rest of the year. They've got a three-wide outlook they're showing right now from the 38-yard line of Nebraska. McCown, deep right sideline, same play as earlier, and knocked away beautifully. Nice job defensively by Erwin Sweeney. Coming up next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. A lot of college football regional action. Oklahoma State and Kansas State will do battle. Colorado, Texas Tech, Purdue, and Penn State in the Big Ten. Oregon, UCLA, a huge Pac-10 game. We'll be in Atlanta for Georgia Tech and Virginia as the Cavaliers have come in unbeaten into that one. Don't forget, check your local listings for the game in your area or call your cable or satellite company for what you can get on pay-per-view. One more look here. You know, you said Sweeney knocked it down. I think Chris Cole knocked it down. Yeah. Tell you the, well, both of them yeah. did. They tell you, it was a play. Good coverage by Sweeney. He just kind of flicked it away at the last second. And they're going to go away for a timeout here as McCown's going to come over, talk things over. The Aggie sideline. And we're going to have a second and ten after we take a look at our Marriott moment. So far, the moment has belonged to AM today. The Big 12 championship, a little bit different story, however. Bobby Newcomb was not the quarterback. Scott Frost was, but Newcomb did a lot of other things like catching passes. Returning punts, including this 40-yard return. Nebraska scored on all seven of its first half possessions en route to a 54-15 Big 12 championship win and ultimately a national championship, a co-national championship with Michigan. And today, not the same kind of story. Already, they've had a couple of series they have not scored on either. In fact, they've had to punt from both, and they have only 18 yards. I think a little different A&M team, though. Going into that game, you know, Nebraska was very focused, but A&M since then, then has played, as we pointed out, UCLA and Florida State since that game. You get ready for this type of competition by playing good football teams. There's a good football coach, R.C. Slocum. Just keeps winning, doesn't he? Yep. The Aggies trying to get their 80th win of the decade. You talk about Nebraska owning the decade. The Aggies are not too far behind. The give to Hall, and Kelsey's got them all wrapped up. Loss of about two on the play. We'll talk about the great teams in the decade of the 90s. Nebraska on top of the heap. But look at if Texas A&M wins today, they move into that 80 bracket, joining Penn State, Tennessee, and Florida. Well, let me change one right here. Uh, there you go. They're tied with Ohio State. That's right. They already beat Illinois today. about so far not a lot of finals yet Texas was beating up on Oklahoma in the Red River War here's that third and long that A&M has been very wor worried about Nebraska does a lot of zone drops and they're going to do it right here bringing the outside guys dropping the tackle third and 12 they do it nose man drops back McCown drops back and falls Curtis
accuracy of Julius Jackson. Boy, it worked to perfection. You called it. The big guys dropped back, and the smaller guys at 235 sacked the quarterback. Biggest difference in football since when I played the now in 12 years. This time, Jason Lohr right here is going to draw the block from the center and then drop back into coverage. Watch how he does it. That means the center, who's going to block somebody, I got you, I got you. No, I don't got you. All I can do is help. And all of a sudden, from the corner, Julius Jackson comes in and sacks the quarterback. That is the biggest difference in football in the last 10 years. As a blocker, all you can say is look out at that point. That's right. And the officials stop play here as the quarter comes to a close. The quarter, though, was Chris Taylor's for a touchdown. It's 7-0 Aggies. The right people, the right parts, the right prices. Quality care for all value days at participating Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. For Ford, Mercury, or Lincoln cars, Motorcraft shocks are just $69 per pair installed. On Ford, light-duty trucks, just $99 per pair installed. For the care your vehicle deserves and the parts it needs, bring it to the folks who know it best. At your service, quality care. I hope I see you there. At BASF, we don't make the boat, we make it faster. We don't make the safety seat, we make it more comfortable. We don't make the studio, we make it quieter. We don't make the golf clubs, we make them more powerful. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. State Farm presents Rules of the Game. We're talking about the runner being downed by contact. In this play, is the runner downed by the tackler? I'm grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm, Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house by a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder. He treated us as a neighbor, as a friend. I gave him a check right away. We went from there to putting the pieces back together. He's not a hero in the sense of a, a sports hero or a movie star. He's a quiet hero. He looks out for everyone in the neighborhood. It's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life. We're talking about a runner being downed by contact. In this play, the runner is not downed by contact as his knee did not touch the ground. He may continue to run with the ball. Rules of the Game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Set to start the second quarter at Kyle Field with Gary Danielson on Brad Nessler. 7-0, the Aggies lead. Stadium was moving there as in between quarters they do their... Uh, cheer and their yells back and forth the whole building was moving Leckler set to move with his leg to kick Walker waiting on it Joe takes it at the seven he had a 73 yarder last week Walker finally they track him down at about the 28 yard line nice return though 20 yards by little Joe it's time now for our Aflac trivia question of the week our question which two of the ten government recognized presidential libraries reside on college campuses? It's about time we got into your brain in some of these, you know, instead of just football questions. I'll give you the answer a little bit later on. You mean they have libraries on these college campuses? I didn't know. That's right. I know you never went to yours at <laughs> Purdue. That's a good idea. They have books there and everything. First down. Bradley is there. So is Brandon Jennings. Makovica, not much on the inside sledding so far today. Not, not much the last two games. Nine yards last week, and I was out there on the field kidding him about it yesterday. And Mike, <laughs> Matt Davidson, the receiver, was kind of laughing about it, averaging 1.5 last week, big goal. <laughs> they know their stats, don't That's they? Right, they do. Oh, look at this shot right here. And you'll get a look at the safeties right here, where they're going to be playing all day about seven to nine yards off the line of scrimmage and playing option football first. There's the safety hit Bobby Newcomb right on the knee. Late pitch. Brooks made the tackle on Evans. And Newcomb gets up, but he's all right. The Evans, or the uh, Newcomb injury, rather, is one that's been kind of strange for them because 
It's not the ACL, it's the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, and it doesn't give him a lot of pain, but it swells up tremendously during the week, so they have a hard time gauging whether he's ready to go, not ready to go. Quite frankly, Frank Solich made the call with us yesterday and said he's going to start. I don't know how good he'll be. All right. Third down in the yard. Nebraska trails by a touchdown. Second man is Evans, and he's dumped again. Jay Brooks came flying around from the outside, that win from the inside. That play seemed so slow developing that Jay Brooks was able to take the corner that time. Makovica that time, the fullback, never hit it full speed. Hey, watch, here comes Brooks coming right around the corner right here. He's going to make the play. When you've got that guy making a play from three yards off the line of scrimmage, that's just not a well-designed play offensively, just too slow. The fourth, third, and out. We had Dett was up front, and we had a corner in the back. <laughs> and punting time for LaFleur. Nebraska does not have a first down today so far. The punt goes to the 14. Taylor, nice stiff arm, got out near the 30 before he's run out of bounds. 16-yard return. It's Chris Taylor day at Kyle Field so far. That and the wrecking crew defense has been tough. Texas and that win, the pride of Rockport, Texas. And those two guys just combined on the last stop that forced the punt, and now the Aggies' offense takes over. McCown with a long touchdown pass already today of 81 yards, working from just inside the 29-yard line. Dante Hall on a toss to the left side, and he's tossed down short of the 25 by Brian Shaw. Coming up on Sunday night on ESPN NFL Action, Danny Cannell and the Giants take on the Atlanta Falcons, who have only one loss this year. That's at 8-15. Then Monday night football, Dan Marino and the once-beaten Dolphins against the undefeated Jacksonville Jaguars, 8 o'clock Monday night on ABC. Second down and 13 upcoming for Texas A&M. 12-45 left first half, 7-0 Aggies. Out of the eye and a play action for McCown. He's got plenty of time, but that one was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Might have been Slechta who got a hand on that at the line. That's something Nebraska's done a good job of this year. They get the pass rush in there with the hands up. And they get the push up front. They're so strong up front. And a lot of people use shorter drops because they're afraid of that pass rush. They go to five-step drops. That means those defensive linemen can reach up. Schlechter got it that time. So far, we've seen Lauren Kaiser and Jason Lohr and Jeremy Schlechter, two freshmen, two, two true freshmen making plays for this Nebraska defense. Selecta slapped that one away. It brings up third and 13. Dodge in motion, and McCown going to try to roll away from the pressure. Throws on the run, completes it, but it's short of the first down. I don't know. By about a yard. 
Is it Chris really? Cole made the grab. Yes, it is. Boy, that was very, very good execution. Another one of those situations where the defense is doing a good job. Here it is right here to the outside. Quarterback's going to come out, take it to the outside. You say, why throw a pass if you're going to go one yard short? Well, that's true, but the ball was led away. It was decent coverage. And you just hope that your receiver will catch it and dive upfield for a first down. So after that touchdown by the Aggies, this is their third straight three and out. And Leckler to kick. Whoops, this one. He almost missed the ball. That goes out near midfield somewhere. In fact, it didn't get to midfield. Boy, for a guy that was sixth in the country coming in, he really shanked that one. Well, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question a little bit earlier. Which two of the ten government-recognized presidential libraries reside on college campuses? The answer, they're both right here in the state of Texas. Wow. The Bush School of uh, Texas A&M, and uh, former president was here at a speaking engagement yesterday. They were taping Charlie Rose's show here, I guess so. President Bush was here. Lyndon B. Johnson's libraries at the University of Texas in Austin. And Nebraska starts to drive in A&M territory. And maybe to the 45 goes Makovica. Ron Edwards, the nose man, made the stop. I know all of you are out there wondering where those other presidential libraries are. Well, we're going to see one next week. I think that's probably what Gary's going to do when he comes down on Thursdays. He'll go to the Jimmy Carter Library in Atlanta. President Ford has his in Michigan. President Kennedy's is in Boston. President Eisenhower's in Abilene, Kansas. I'll give you the other couple after this play. On the option, Newcomb, late pitch. Big hit again. There's just no running room for the I-backs, in this case, D'Angelo Evans. Jay Brooks got a hit. Cornelius Anthony helped spread it out. They're all there to meet him. Franklin Roosevelt's library is in Hyde Park, New York, and Herbert Hoover's is in West Branch, Iowa. Did you know all that? No. That's a simple answer to that one. I didn't even know they had them around. I'm going to take this you, home, friend. give it to my kids, tell them memorize that, mm -hmm. and you can be a TV announcer someday. <laughs> <laughs> Walking off very slowly. Is Kazmersky shaking up on the play. Brings up third down along five. Newcomb, plenty of time in the pocket. Zips it out to Davison. It's a first down. Cornhuskers at the 31-yard line. That's the second grab of the day for Matt Davison. Matt Davidson, first start of the year this year. Going to go down 12 yards. But first play you put in when you're playing street ball, go down to the convertible button hook right in front of it. I'll just throw it right to you. It's a really nice convertible. Just hop in, right. and make I'll sure toss you, it to you there. Make sure you catch it. We don't want to dent that thing either. <laughs> first, first down of the day for Nebraska comes at the 11-minute mark. Newcomb. And again, a different eye back. Same result. Buckhalter stopped by Jason Glenn. Jason Glenn, whose brother also played here, only was a defensive back, and now with yep. the New York Jets. Jason Glenn comes in the nickel package. You know, there's another tradition around here. It's the friendliest campus on around. They say howdy. There's a little howdy right there. There was like there's three or howdy. four howdies. There's a howdy. Howdy, Corey. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to Kyle Field, said Jason Glenn. Howdy. Second down along 10. Newcomb, play fake. Fires out complete inside the 20 and down to the 14-yard line is Davison again. 17 more. Matt Davison making his first start and making his presence felt here now in the second quarter. Matt Davison told me at the walkthrough yesterday that he always dreamed of playing for two schools. Well, he kind of said it this way. I'm going to do it exactly the way he said it. He said, you know, I always dreamed of playing here for A&M. I thought, that, oh, oh, wait a second. Don't say that. Make sure you I say <laughs> Nebraska first and then A&M second. He said, I always wanted to be a Cornhusker, but I didn't know if they'd recruit me. So he said, I kind of liked A&M. Cannot wait to play here. And uh, Tecumseh, Nebraska, has given his team a first down at the 14-yard line. There's the stack eye. And Duca keeps it. Paid the price. Probably got leveled by Rocky Bernard as he reached the 10-yard line. An old tradition coming back again. Rocky Bernard, you remember you said these defensive linemen is right here. He's going to be come off the block that time, run down the line of scrimmage, and goes, howdy, buddy. That's 
was nice pursuit. <laughs> you said they were a little undersized, but they do run well. And I think that's what Oklahoma State did last week against this Nebraska team. You can't be slow against this option. You got to have people make plays. Well, this is a team that knows how to put it in the end zone when they get in the red zone. And again, the stack eye. Only about a yard, maybe two inside for Makavica. And on the other hand, you talk about scoring for an offense in the red zone. Texas A&M, they're a team that uh, kind of ruins your plans a lot. Opponents have scored on 11 of 14, though, and seven of them touchdowns. That's a little bit off the norm for this team in past years. They're hoping not to give one up here. Third down and three. Nebraska trying to tie the game up. They can get a first down inside the Aggie four. Newcomb, the pitch, Buckhalter, got there, touchdown. Correll Buckhalter dives in the corner, and we're an extra point away from a tie ball game. You always talk about responsibility defense against the option. This time, Walt Holden, number 43, did not perform his assignment. He peeked into the inside as an outside linebacker. Bobby Newcomb saw that. Here he is, right here at the end of the line. Watch him peek inside. That's all it is, just one little peek. He looks inside, and then he says, oops, I see you. I'll pitch it outside. There's the breakdown in the defense. A walk-in, well, actually a fly-in, a Ricky Williams fly-in in the end zone. Extra point, number 106 in a row for Chris Brown, and we do have a tie game. So Nebraska got good field position, and they knew what to do with it. Constructed themselves a touchdown. We're dead even at seven. Room 1203 wants to swim without floaties. Marriott, when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Chevy Tahoe with a Vortec engine. The most powerful SUV anywhere. beer-drinking adult has a cold Coors Light in his hands. Rest. Rest is for the peanut vendors and the nacho guys. The folks who frost-brew Coors Light, they don't rest until it's perfectly refreshing. And it's my job to get it to you that way. Oh, there's no rest for the beer man! Not until every fan here is refreshed! Joey, you ready? I think everyone here is pretty refreshed, right? ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Silverado, the truck from Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks. Nicorette Gum, you can do it, Nicorette can help. Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. And Burger King, if you ask us, it just tastes better. And those two young ladies heading into the President's Library, we're heading into a kickoff. The tie game, and it just got to the end zone. Perfect bounce into the corner, and the Aggies will start from the 20. One more look at the breakdown right here. You see Bobby Newcomb comes out. You see Holden, number 43, just on the left side of the screen, right there. There's the guy that was out of position, peeking inside at the fullback. The ball's pitched out. That throws the whole defense out of whack. 7-7 seven seven, seven with 8.31 left in the half. Let's see if the Aggies can answer with some offense of their own. Their big play today, an 81-yard touchdown pass. Other than that, they've had three three and outs in a row, and the officials blow this one dead. And the, all the crowd just had a big sigh because right. Dante Hall had a huge opening there. Might have been due to the whistles. We've been talking and kidding around a little bit about the guys in the hard hats, the construction workers, and that end, our left. That's going to be the zone, they call it, as this seating capacity. This yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal. This high, 
And see these guys that are standing here right now, these guys? They'll have great seats. They're going to have great seats. Yep. And, you know, instead of being paid, like right now, these guys are on double time. They're probably making 40 bucks an hour doing what they're doing right there. Well, they're making hope, more than you and I. you got right to hope now. those are diet sodas they're right. drinking. Otherwise, I don't want them building the right. zone. Next year, you're going to be paying more than $40 <laughs> an hour to sit there. That's right. That right now. <laughs> yeah, they might be in the zone. <laughs> that could be true. That guy's zoned out. <laughs> First down at 15 at the 15. And only about two yards for Hall. Lauren Kaiser closed the door on him. One of the things we talked to Steve Craigthorpe, the offensive coordinator, about when you play Nebraska, you get so concerned about not turning the ball over, you don't take enough chances to make big plays. Three straight times now, AM has not turned the ball over, but three straight three and outs for this offense. To me, that's that's nearly like a turnover, especially when your punter shanks a punt. Yep. Shanked a couple, actually, considering how good he is at that second down at 12. Oh, just getting by the first tackler is Hall. And the ball came swirling out of there, but he was already in the sideline and out near the 27, where it's going to bring up a third down and a long three. Joe Walker made the hit that squirted the ball loose. Walker, he gives up a 67-yard <laughs> touchdown pass last week, and about 10 minutes later, he has a 73-yard punt return that basically won the game for Nebraska. And Frank Solich says he drives me crazy, but at least he drives it in the right direction sometimes. He's a great, great player, and he's going to continue to make plays. He actually went back to where the ball ended up after it was hit, so instead of third and two, it's third and seven. Now Nebraska's in that nickel situation again when they do so many different things. Out of the gun. McCown with a loft one for Cole. He went up for it, but it's broken up by Sweeney. Well, he took a shot downfield, and it's incomplete, and they'll have to punt it away again. Nebraska and Sweeney has kind of figured out what the AM passing game is. Every time they get bump and run here, they run a fade. What AM has to do is lock on an out off of the fade, not just run the fade. Right now, the Nebraska defense, and Sweeney says, they're going to adjust to a fade. No matter what route they have, they're going to run this route when I come in bump and run. That's not a high percentage throw. Leckler, this time he got his foot into it. Walker waits on it at the 29. First man missed. Joe Walker got the corner, run out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Nice return of 15 yards. Nebraska and Texas A&M deadlocked at 7. John Graham, veteran stuntman, walks away every time, then drives away. Chevy S10, like a rock. have it your way, it just tastes better. You'd expect the fertile patch of earth like Nebraska to produce a university on the cutting edge of agricultural science. But did you know we're also pioneers in the growing field of distance education? Reaching out to students in all 93 Nebraska counties, all 50 United States and 135 countries around the world, no matter what your perspective, there's no place like Nebraska. Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of the Bowl Championship Series on ABC. Let's go! Coming up tomorrow, live at 4 Eastern on ABC Sports, we'll bring you the Major League Soccer playoffs. You don't want to miss game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Columbus Crew takes to the field against the two-time defending MLS Cup champion, D.C. United. Who's going to make it to Pasadena? The quest for the Cup will continue tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern. This is when I'd always be worried about the play-action pass and uh, Nebraska going for the home run ball. Buckhalter remains the eye back. Newcomb will keep it. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's about 
it. Warwick Holdman, the first guy to get there to make the stop along with Ron Edwards. Nebraska took a long time. They had to get four minutes into the second quarter to get their initial first down. As you see what they did in their first five possessions, but the last drive, once they got that first down, next 48 yep. yards went kind of fast. But they did it mostly through the air. Still yep. 20 rushes for 37 yards in the game. Two passes to Matt Davis and got him down close last time. Second and nine. Their own 46, Newcomb. They go deep down the middle for his tight end, Jackson, and he overshot it. Oh, the flag comes in. Was that ball catchable or doesn't it matter? I don't think it was close to catch. I don't think so either. Cody and Jackson both back there playing center field just trying to shag that fly down. There's a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage also. That ball. You can see the ball was thrown up in desperation. Cody just kind of entangled himself that time with the tight end Sheldon Jackson who's averaging 27 yards a catch on plays like this. Coming back. There's the ball. Ball's overthrown. Cody's just trying to get out of the way. Well, I guess you got to call that. I guess huh? you do. I guess you do. Let's see if they're offsetting anyway. Holding Nebraska. Interference. Uh, holding, rather. A&M. Right. Let's do it again. There's a lot of things that can happen good when you throw the ball deep, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. If you don't believe so, ask the Green Bay Packers and Randy Moss last week. Four. That's right. Holding. On the offense, holding, on the defense, replay second down. Nebraska, their first penalty. It really doesn't matter if the ball is caught and catchable or not, if the call is holding, and it doesn't matter where the ball is. So second down, and nine again. Here's Nebraska coming out in four wide receivers. And as Mike Hankowitz said, they still run the option in the quarterback draw, obviously, off of this formation. Newcomb fires out across midfield, completes it to the 48 to Matt Davison again, who's become his favorite receiver today. Short of the first down, though. Third down and a couple upcoming. Last week, Nebraska and Oklahoma State, OSU's defense held Nebraska to four yards rushing in the first half. In fact, the first play of the third quarter, it was zero yards after they sacked oh, Bobby Newcomb. But Joe Walker was the tide turner. This is the one I talked about. 73 yards for the punt return touchdown. And then Mike Rucker makes the hit on Nathan Simmons. Short of the goal line, short of an upset. And Frank Solich's team remains unbeaten at 5-0. and But they've got their hands full today, tied at 7 here in Aggieland at Kyle Field. Third and a couple. Newcomb hit. 50. Lonnie Madison made the stop. Well, AM's defense has always been known for those front guys uh, playing a lot of people, especially this year. As many as eight different defensive linemen will play. This time it's Lonnie Madison, number 97, who makes a stunt inside. This time Ben Gesford, the guard, who was reaching on the play to the outside. Madison comes inside and makes the play. That's a huge stop again. Running game for Nebraska has been nothing in this game so far. The floor's kick, he hit it a mile in the air. What a beauty. Taylor gets out of the way and it makes the end zone. With five minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And we're tied up at seven as the Aggies will take over on offense. Let's take a look at the Home Depot coaches facts. Nebraska coaching staff, you talk about experience, you think about the Penn States and Nebraska's, those kind of teams, when they're consistent with their staffs, they tend to be consistent in their victories. And you can see Frank Solich has been around 20, Coach Darlington 26, Charlie McBride, defensive coordinator 22, Coach Tenefer on the line 25, and the list keeps going on and on. And that's how you win a lot of football games, you keep the same people around. They are all good coaches. Didn't go anywhere. The only one that went anywhere was Coach Osborne, and he retired. <laughs> no, I was, I was looking at all those years, you know, and I'm just kind of playing with that. If you add that up, that adds up to 135 years. And you know, if you what was happening 135 years ago at this time? Um, Andrew Johnson was being impeached. Oh doo -doo 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 -doo. boy! What is? And you're kidding me about the presidential library <laughs> stuff? <laughs> all right. I, did, I stayed up studying for that one. You must time. have. Second down and five. 
the give. Hall oh, got three more. Vandenbosch makes back-to-back -back tackles on Dante. And it will bring up a critical third and two for AM if they're to try to get anything else going offensively in the second quarter. Vandenbosch kid is going to be some kind of player. He sure is. Charlie McBride pointed him out to us and said he's going to be another Grant Wisterman. And you're right. You watch him. He plays with a fast motor, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Third down and two. Let's see if AM can rev something up here offensively. First man. And he runs, not like a 271-pound guy, I'll tell you that. Nebraska was caught gambling. You think these coaches don't stay late at night for some reason? This time they had a feeling that this type of play would look. Look at that hole. Nebraska had their linebackers up close to the line of scrimmage trying to draw the blocks. And when Toons got the ball, he didn't look like anything but a tailback with the ball as he was just galloping towards the end zone. They call him Big Rumble. He's rumbled to the one. Now it's Hall. Touchdown. It's enough to make you smooch when your 270-pound fullback takes it 71 yards. Your tailback takes it the other three feet. A&M back in front. Who would have known you'd need a bottle of mouthwash to play Nebraska today, huh? <laughs> Two touchdowns. The extra point is up and good. 14 to 7. The Aggies in front. 37 left in the half here. Let's send it to our New York studios in John Sonner. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98, a very big day of college football. Virginia, the only team in the top 10 not playing today. Yeah, 14 teams start today undefeated. That number will get knocked down a few key matchups all day long. All right, we'll have the scores and highlights. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98. On the sideline, big rumble. <laughs> Jamar Toombs, he brings back memories of George Woodard. Remember George him? George Woodard, yep. He had over 2,700 yards in his career here, and then he kind of ate himself out of a football career. R.C. Slocum's told this young guy, don't get too big, big fella. He thought he was about 235, which is what they list him in the media guide. The first time they went to training table, he says, you don't want to get up to 270. What R.C. found out later, he was already at 271. Right. If he's 235, I want to jump on that scale tomorrow <laughs> because I'm going to be under 200 again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's a shocker. Caught Charlie McBride gambling in one of those stunt defenses where he put his linebackers very close to the line of scrimmage, gashed him with the fullback, did not think the fullback would get the ball, and that's what happens when you gamble and play man coverage to the outside. Short kick taken at the 28. And it's Sheldon Jackson, second time today. The tight end has had to field a kick. And for the second time today, Nebraska will have to play from behind. 80-yard march, 71 of it by Jamar Toombs in a minute and 36. You see that welt sort of on his forehead? It's the only problem he's having right now injury-wise. For some reason, after games, that thing swells up on him. Sometimes he can't get his helmet on. And you were kidding around yesterday, and uh, Steve Cragthorpe said, well, you know, it's not that big a problem. I said it, it might be to him if he's not going out afterwards. <laughs> Unless you wear your helmet on a date, it could look a little odd. Got to go with the baseball cap. 